Hello, welcome and lovely greetings. Now, after having solved paper one, this segment will be for discussion and solution of paper two. Let's begin. Okay, the first question, it's from optics and there is a lot of thought process involved in it. Now, let me show a wonderful question has been made. This is, you know, a large square container here is the container and you know it has transparent vertical walls and filled with water. So here is the case you know water has been filled inside the refractive index that is given as 4 by 3. So mu is equal to 4 by 3. And then let us try to see here is an observer the observer is viewing towards this side and you know the object is this. Now, because of refraction on both the sides, you go through the question, let us see that. Now, what it says, a student holds a thin straight wire, here is a thin straight wire vertically inside the water 12 centimeter away. So, from here to here the distance is 12 centimeter and looking from this particular corner, you know, another student sees two images of the wire and why would two images be seen? because of refraction through one phase and through other phase. And we need to calculate the separation in centimeter between these images. Now, no any formula would be valid because this is not a paraxial situation. And these are the two images which would be observed. So, we need to calculate the separation between them. Now, what I will do is that let me redraw the figure. I will just scale it up so that we can have a nice view and the figure goes something like this. So, here is that ok, this is the square. Further, now lots of things are involved here. So, we need to go very patiently step by step and here is the object see the object is somewhere here, the distance of the object is 12 centimeter we are certainly going to maintain that. Now, since the observer is this side, so which refracted ray would be considered? The refracted ray which would be reaching towards the observer. So, out of that if I consider one refracted ray because one is more than enough, you know let me make a normal here. So, this is the normal ok and then finally making the ray it goes in this way. So, here is the incident ray and it gets refracted. Now, see why did I consider the emergent ray to be parallel to this? There are two reasons. Number one the positioning of the observer is such that the most likelihood of getting the emergent ray is this, but you know the image formation takes place not with one ray, there are multiple rays which are very close to each other. So, amongst them this one will give me the easiest calculation approach. So, it is all about the fact and cleverness both included. Now, let us try to see another point you need to understand is this is the you know incident ray and that gets refracted here. Now, where would the image be? the image would be in a line wherever you extend it, you backtrace it. So, anywhere the image would be there. Actually, I am not interested in the exact location of image. For me, one thing is sufficient anywhere along this line the image would be there because this is where the emergent ray goes once it is backtraced. And the same thing happens in the below surface as well. So, distance between the two images is all this y distance that is all I need to calculate. So, therefore, I am not interested in the exact location of the image and we will be requiring a little bit of calculation here. So, let me name ok this is O and further let me call this as A, let me call this as B. Now, that will be almost sufficient you could see this angle is 45 degree and this particular angle is of course, let me write it here i the angle of incidence and this is of course, equals to 90 
and this is 45 so rest can be easily managed let us not clutter the figure ok first of all let us write this Snell's law. So if I go with this Snell's law I will be writing mu 4 by 3 sin i is sin of 45. So this equation gives me the value of sin i and that is equal to 3 by 4 root 2. So we have done the value of sin i and if I know sin i I can calculate cos, I can calculate tan, anything can be done. Okay, now what we will do is see, let us just see in this particular triangle OAB, okay, this distance is 12 centimeter. If I see I get an opportunity to apply the sine law 12 divided by sin of, you know, this is 90, this is i, so sin 90 plus i and there is no problem because now we know sin i, so you can calculate others as well this is equal to, you know I am interested in calculating AB. So, AB divided by sine of this angle, this is what I need to calculate. Now, I think that is very easy because this is 45, so this is 90 specifically this angle is going to be 45 minus of I, right, that is how it goes. So now what I will do is that sin of 45 minus of i. So this is all what we need to do. All right. So now you know the value of AB. But the question says that you need to calculate separation between the two images. So what is that? Just think this angle is 45 degree and the required answer is it goes something like this. You see AB multiplied by sin 45 is what? This particular height AB sin 45 but exactly in the same way an image is also formed via the lower surface. So you multiply by 2 that is what you need to do and solve this ok. The value will come 4.49 centimeter and for this time it is an integer based question and we need to report the answer in single integer that is what we need to do. So in that given case the required answer is going to be 4 in centimeter that was a good one. Normally it happens in examination the first question you pick goes terribly difficult or calculation goes lengthier but that should never demotivate you. Let us move to question number 2. Question number 2 you will get a nice opportunity to apply Bernoulli's equation but it is not so straightforward. You need to look at the question very properly. There is a train which is passing through a long tunnel and if you see here the train has a speed Vt and the cross sectional area of the tunnel the value is 4 times the cross sectional area of the train and as the train passes through the tunnel you know we need to calculate difference in pressure between two points and what are they? P naught is the ambient pressure and P is the pressure in the zone between the train and the wall of the tunnel. So what we will do is that we will just make a schematic diagram and that schematic diagram will be sufficient enough for us to visualize. So this is the tunnel I am just making the top view all right and the train let us try to make it again please do not scale the figure. So this is the top view of the train and here it comes all right now what we will do is the train is moving with a speed Vt that is the speed of the train and if we talk about the cross section now you could see the cross section of the train is A while that of tunnel is 4A. In order to simplify the process what we will do is that let us see the entire situation with respect to train and that will make the matter fairly simpler. Now if I say with respect to train I can remove this velocity and the air this side will be moving with a velocity Vt. 
what about the air which would pass in this zone? The zone between the train and the wall of the tunnel. Straightforward continuity. Now you could see this area and this area, sum total, that is going to be 3A because the total is 4A is the area of the train. That means if the cross sectional area has, you know, become that means if the cross sectional area relation is this complete is 4A and that total is 3A. So, the area has become 3 fourth. So, the velocity has to become 4 by 3 of the velocity of air at this zone. So, the first part has been done. So, now we got a relationship between the velocity of air in this zone and in this zone. So, this is forming a streamline and we can use Bernoulli equation between this point and this point that is perfectly allowed. So, if I use the Bernoulli's equation, what is going to happen? The ambient pressure there that is P naught plus of 1 by 2 rho into V t square will be equals to the pressure there is P plus 1 by 2 rho into 4 by 3 v t square. So, this is all the job. You need to find p naught minus of p and that is quite very simple. That is not going to be a trouble and ultimately the value of n will come out to be 9. In fact, the expression becomes 7 by 18 rho v t square. So, therefore, n will be equals to 9. Let us go to the next question. The next one is a very straightforward, just do not get scared by the volume of the sentences here. But you know, effectively it is quite a simple one. If you go through the question, now here is an arrangement, you just see there are two discs and they are maintained with a potential difference of 200 volt, separation between them is 0 0.01 meter. So, you know, you can easily see that the electric field between this will be 200 divided by 0 0.01. Okay, now, what is the question? Let us try to say. You see, initially, the distance that is of course given, charged oil drops of density this much are released through a tiny holes at the center. So, this is very much related to the Millikan's oil drop experiment. Okay. So, the density of the oil is given and once, now here is the main question, once some oil drops achieve terminal velocity, Okay, so, they were initially moving falling after some time the terminal velocity would be achieved and at that very time a potential difference of 200 volt is applied. Subsequently, the oil drop having this much radius stops moving vertically and now it floats. So, the idea is almost clear and we need to you know neglect the buoyant force. Now, here what you need to understand is that Initially, the terminal velocity was obtained when mg would be balanced by the resistive force. Now, later on, when the potential difference is applied, the drop is at rest. So, therefore, there is no question of resistive force because the velocity is missing. And if the drop is at rest, it is quite simple. How would you calculate? You would simply calculate by doing Qe is equal to m multiplied by g. And what is the thing that we need to calculate? The number of electrons, you know, present in this oil drop. That is what we need to do. So, we can do that quite easily. You know, the charge is going to be n times E. Electric field is potential difference by D and this is the distance D. The mass is 4 by 3 pi R cube density rho into G. That is all. A little bit of calculation and you are going to get the value of n as 6. So, that was about question number 3. Let us move to the fourth question.